How is it that I can set up with a club face like this and hit a straight shot like that? Well, it's actually the shaft lean because by closing the face, what this actually does, it provides the opportunity now to move the butt end of the golf club ahead of the ball and now we've got a functional club face. Because by closing the face, not only is that de-lofting the club, it's bringing the sweet spot towards the ball and it's also bringing the leading edge forward. So the bounce now, it's taking the bounce off the club and we can get that leading edge, cut it into the ground, get the sweet spot on the ball and get that compression and let the bounce then do the work with the release. So with a club face that's closed, this allows us to lean the shaft forward. But to do that, we have to move the butt end of the club into this space, we have to move it forward. And this can be quite an unusual feeling in a golf swing, to actually move into this space that's gonna allow us to use that closed face. Because it's not really a closed face. In a golf swing, it's closing. So we're not really starting with a face like this, we're starting with a what would be conventionally square, if you like, and the face is opening, and it's closing and it's how we're closing the face that's going to present this opportunity to get the shaft lean or alternatively do the opposite and get the dreaded flip roll so it brings in that early contact with the ground maybe a fat shot or a thin as it bounces off the ground and you'll know if this is happening to you you'll know if your low points a bit too far back because you'll be catching the ball off the lower grooves on the club so we're not trying to hit a golf ball presenting the club like this with the shaft almost in the same place as in the setup we're actually striking the golf ball in a very different place. And it's this space we need to explore. How do we actually use the golf club in a functional way to get the sweet spot presented to the ball like this? So if we think about the actual physical requirements of striking a golf ball, look where the butt end of the club is in relation to the club head. It's very noticeably a long way forward. So how do we get the butt end of the golf club over there? Well, it's not by swishing the golf club. If you find yourself swishing the club like this and associating this with the swinging of a golf club, you're already introducing these issues. Because the golf swing isn't just a pendulum. It's actually two pendulums. It's one over here and it's one over here. And it's this space in between that we need to develop awareness for. Because this gives us the ability to regulate our golf swing, to direct it using not only low point control, but also the direction of the club. Very often we're thinking about where the club head's going, but this is influenced by the handle. So if the handle goes over here, it's gonna influence the swinging of the club. And the handle needs to travel first for this to follow and release. And if we think about where the low point of the swing is, it's gonna be heavily influenced by where the butt end of the club is. So if we think of a pendulum, the low point of the pendulum is below the butt end. We need to attune ourselves to this. We need to attune ourselves to these variables, these ranges. So the first thing we're gonna do is get a sense of this double pendulum here. It's a flail. And this flail enables us to create the all important lag. So the club head trails. And now the release of the club is very much within our control. So we can decide when we want this club to go. If we're swishing the club like this, if you notice, the butt end of the club, it's moving forward and then back. This low point is moving around and we've got a golf club that's accelerating and it's almost like trying to hit a moving target with the low point. It's gonna be hit and miss. And not only that, the low point is near the golf ball. And this presents another problem. Not only have we got to hit this perfect at the right time, but because we're on an incline, as the club's traveling towards the low point, it's traveling away and after that low point, towards. So wherever that low point is, that's determining the in to out or the out to in. And if you've got a club face that's rotating and it's not that recognizable, you can start the ball left and have pull draws, you can have push cuts. You're gonna have a lot of variability because there's a lot of noise here in this area. So what we wanna do is we wanna reduce that noise. We need to experience this rotation of the face because what this is going to enable us to do is actually create the opportunity to use that motion. So what we need to experience is this rotation about the shaft. This is how we're rotating the club head, not like this. That is a way of rotating the face, of course, and we can hit good shots like that, no doubt. 
but is it actually repeatable? If we've got a lot of noise happening in the swing, that's okay, but we're probably gonna have to practice a lot to recognize the timing. So we wanna make a motion that is a lot easily recognizable, more repeatable without hours and hours and hours of practice. So we need to attune ourselves to this rotation. Let's practice hitting some toe deep divots, getting the toe to dig into the ground. This can be quite a strange feeling, trying to get the toe to dig in. I suggest you do it on grass, probably not your front lawn. And what we're gonna do is get the toe digging in. So the divot's gonna look like this. And you can see the orientation of the club head. And notice my hands have rotated. And it's this feeling that we're looking for because this feeling is gonna allow us to move into this space. So this rotation is something that can feel quite strange because most of us are using this. And we recognize that as a release. So the toe deep divot is probably gonna produce a pull draw if we try and hit a golf ball. So if I hit a ball now and try and create that toe deep divot, it's a low pull draw. You'll probably find the impact with the ground, it cuts the swing short. And that's fine, because we've got a downward angle of attack. And it's a pull draw. Now that might be perceived to be a terrible shot, okay? But if we change the direction of the swing using the handle, suddenly that low pull draw becomes a stronger draw. Because now we're striking it with the handle forward. So we've got a ball turf contact. So the divot here is telling us that the low point was in front of the golf ball and it was also below the ground because the divot was going down. So that's a good sign. So you can actually use your divots as feedback. We want to get the low point in front of the ball, which means we can't entertain this kind of action. We need to have this kind of action. So how do we get the butt end over here? Well, what I'd like to do is a very simple exercise. Take a normal stance and very simply stand on your right leg. Okay, you can support yourself with the other foot if you like, but make sure there's no weight on this leg. And just strike the ground. And just notice where you strike. And then bring the other foot back into position. And notice where you were striking the ground. A long way back here to the right. Now we'll do the opposite. So I'll stand on my left leg. Just put the right foot back or hold it in the air. I'm just gonna put it on the ground just for a bit of stability. And now notice where we strike over here. So if I bring my right foot back, look at the difference between these two divots. They're a long way apart. And how is that so? Because I moved my weight across. I was over here for this divot and over here for this divot. So already we started to develop a sense of where we are in space with the body to influence the divot. So it stands to reason if I want to move my low point forward, i.e. shift the divot further left, I need to be transferring my weight before I release the club. So we need to be ahead of the club head over here. So if you've got divots that are too early, we need to think about how we're transferring the weight. But we also need to recognize how this fits into a full motion with this pendulum action. So we need to recognize this. So very simply, take the club in just one hand. I'd suggest you trail hand, so right hand for me. Start with your feet together. Start with the club out in front here and just take a little step, ideally a jump, towards your trail side and then swish the club and then jump towards the target and then swish the club. These swishers are happening in very different places and the club isn't swinging as I jump. It's moving with me. So it's moving in space with me and then it swishes and then it moves in space with me and then swishes again. So you can envisage now where the divot would be where the bottom of the pendulum is. This is really important for this low point control. So what I suggest you do now is then take the club with two hands and get a sense for how that swing feels. It's a very different action. And you might perceive this to be a sway because we're so focused on keeping the head still. We're so focused on not moving away from the ball in an effort to control that low point. But that might be the problem. That might be introducing the noise because by keeping our head still and trying to stay stable, we actually have to use our wrist to get speed and that encourages this kind of release. The complete opposite kind of release that we need to control our low point and get that strike and get that natural draw fly. Not that we're always looking for a draw, of course, because 
we'll be able to shift into a fade by sensing the direction of the club because it's, this gives us time. If you feel in your golf swing that you're lacking time, that it's quick and you're at the ball way too early, that's probably because you're releasing the club like this and the butt-end's moving back, club-head's moving forward, there's no time to do anything. But if the club-head's moving forward and this is trailing, we've got all the time in the world before we let this go and we can also influence the direction we want to go. So if we want to fade it, you might feel the handle move more to the left before it releases. And we've got a path to the left or butt end to the right. Very different directions. We start to recognize where we are in space to facilitate this delivery, which creates that release and that shot pattern. So we've got some simple exercises that we can use to get a sense of that weight shift and that flail, that double pendulum, which helps us control where that low point is get that delivery to produce that compression on the golf ball and that control over that ball flight on a consistent basis. If you love the coaching and want to experience the effects of the training that you see with our pupils, you can purchase the GRFI system yourself by following the link in the video description. You'll get all the equipment and a two hour download covering all the fundamentals, exploring your movement and how you can use the ground and create those all important ground reaction forces and transfer them through to club head speed and experience the gains that you're seeing in the videos.